Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everybody. You got Lanny and Bert. We are pumped to bring you an update about our favorite dividend stock that we love to talk about. That stock, come on, everybody. You guessed it, AT&T. So, Lanny, you know the drill. I do know the drill. Smash that subscribe button. Give Bert and Lanny a nice thumbs up. The Dividend Diplomats are here to talk to you about the big new update from AT&T that got released on Friday, February 26th. Dividend investors in the investor community, you want to pay attention to this. So get ready, everybody. The long, drawn out, awaited discussion about what on earth AT&T is going to do with DirecTV is finally happening. We finally have an answer, everybody. We have an answer on how AT&T is going to handle DirecTV. In this video, we'll go over the parties that are involved, obviously AT&T is included, how much the deal is going to be worth, what AT&T gets out of this deal, what the new deal really means in terms of a new entity, and what this could mean for you as a dividend investor and the impact to the potential dividend going forward. That's fantastic, Lanny. So let's give a quick recap of where have we been with AT&T. In the last year, AT&T has teased a full-blown <clears throat> sale of DirecTV. They started shopping the company last year. Turns out the offers weren't exactly what they were liking. They weren't get, seeing what they were, they were liking. So they started towards the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. We started hearing rumors that there was going to be a minority purchase of AT&T from private equity. And that's really where we stand today. And it turns out those rumors were true because that was actually the transaction that happened here. AT&T sold a minority stake to TPG, a private equity firm. So TPG, a private equity firm, and AT&T are coming to terms on a deal for DirecTV. AT&T did not want to give up full control of DirecTV. Sounds like they really wanted a piece of that cash flow, Bert. Yeah, the cash is still coming in. So with DirecTV, they're actually going to create a new entity. And Bert, what's this new entity called? I th the new entity, they went really deep into the well for names here. They're going to call this new entity DirecTV. Wow. It's yeah. almost like it's been there before. Yeah, I guess they saved a lot on marketing expenses, <laughs> new logos. They don't have to go through all that new because they're mailers. Bert yeah. gets to keep the old t-shirts he has. Yeah. My tattoo is still relevant it's for DirecTV. Yeah. The one that wraps around. Yeah. So in this deal, the enterprise value for this new entity that was used for TPG to purchase the, the minority stake is over $16 billion. That's a far cry from the nearly $50 billion AT&T paid for DirecTV and years ago. $67 billion when you include the debt that they took on. Oh, that. I forgot about that, Lanny. So great point. Yeah, I way undersold how bad this loss is right now for AT&T, but that was in the past, DirecTV sank. So now all you can do is look at what you have, find the value and do your best to salvage this bad situation. So why did AT&T make this move? Well, um, DirecTV was pretty much going to be a, a lost leader for them. Um, <laughs> and with the battle with streaming wars and the recent launch of HBO Max, um, you know, DirecTV, I don't know how much sense it made to continue to hold that in their brand portfolio. No, it's almost like they had the vision of what they were doing today, just running it through DirecTV at the time of the acquisition. And then the market just moved heavily in the other direction after that time. And, and then Bert, what else was happening in the end of 2020 and early 2021? Um, and I know I just talked about the notification you got on your phone. What does AT&T want to focus further into as well? Yeah, so after this move, they're trying to become a market leader with 5G as you can tell by how they've been battling Verizon and T-Mobile and some of these 5G auctions to improve that service. They also want to move into the fiber internet space to really deliver you the fast speeds internet going forward. And then lastly, they're taking the streaming into HBO Max. So that was the big news that came out of this earnings call. They're trying to get rid of DirecTV and some of the legacy stuff they don't want. And they're moving into becoming a modern 2021 company focusing on 5G fast internet, and then streaming services. Yep, so AT&T refocusing the hat on what most consumers are using right now. Mm -hmm. You know, look at your streaming, look at your internet, and look at your phone. It's pretty much that's what AT&T right now is focusing on. So Bert, what, what was the overall package deal with mm -hmm. AT&T and this third party private equity firm TPG? Yeah, it's nice because we actually finally know the numbers behind this transaction now. 
with this deal, as we said, the enterprise value was just over $16 billion. AT&T is going to get $7.6 billion in cash. And then on top of that, this new spun off entity is going to assume $5.8 billion in the debt financing as well. So yeah, a nice little chunk of change here for AT&T, slightly above the reported numbers from earlier in 2020. So the caveat here is with this new entity, AT&T still wants to own 70%. They still want that cash flow. Yep. The cash is coming in still. They're going to get a little bit. It'll just be accounted for a little differently. So TPG owns 30%. The nice part with this is they're going to figure out what to do with DirecTV. They're kind of cleaning up the balance sheet they're, for AT&T as a core company because, as we said, they are focusing on those strategic things. Now there's a little more freedom for DirecTV to move on its own. Do they pursue that dish acquisition? Do they pursue something different? Now it's finally separate from AT&T and their management company, so AT&T focuses on its cash flow, DirecTV on its own. The big caveat here, though, too, is that, Bert, one large piece of content from DirecTV stays with DirecTV. And what is that? I thought this was actually a pretty funny little caveat here in the deal because DirecTV is keeping Sunday NFL Ticket, which is a huge, huge popular... Huge. It is. It's, I got, sorry. It's a big money maker. Yeah, well, apparently it is not, and I'll get to that in a second, but DirecTV is going to keep a Sunday NFL tickets. So all you fantasy football fans that had AT&T, you're probably going to need to have your own subscription here now for DirecTV. So that will stay with DirecTV. And what was that joke I was just making? AT&T is covering the losses for two years on DirecTV in that, that contract. So what on earth did AT&T sign a few years ago and how bad and was could, this performing? And, they could, and they're on the hook for up to two and a half billion dollars of losses that they may sustain. It's insane. What the heck happened with this contract? We're never gonna know, but it's hilarious to me, to be honest with you, that it was that bad of a deal that AT&T has to cover $2.5 in losses. So again, in summary, the deal was over $16 plus billion with TPG forming a new entity. 70% owned by AT&T, 30% owned by TPG. The caveat is, is that the deal is not also all cash. The deal is $7.6 billion in cash and $5.7 to $5.8 billion in debt on the DirecTV. So indirectly, AT&T is still owning some of that debt, but now the big piece is, is what is AT&T, you know, they're gonna probably use that cash for a bird. They're probably going to use it to pay down the debt on their balance sheet, improve some of their metric, and they're gonna help cover some of the new debt they're gonna take on for this 5G option. So they're gonna pay down some old debt, get some new one to get them to focus on those new key strategies so <clears throat> it's a they're positioning themselves they're clearing themselves of something they didn't want on their balance sheet anymore and that was kind of an albatross for the company and figuring it out because this conversation about direct tv did not end again i think we're all excited and happy that at&t's management team again have been able to strike a deal and they're looking to get this done mm -hmm. now i know that they'll have all their teams busy trying to get this deal structured correctly and completed correctly. Um, but again, going forward for dividend investors, um, the stock price actually didn't really react much. Um, it's actually interesting, the day before the announcement, going into Friday of the 26th, AT&T was trading at close to $29 a share. And then along with the rest of the stock market on the February 26th, at and stock plummeted below $28 a share. Yeah, and then after the news here when this, this the DirecTV was announced, you'd expect something, but in the after hours, the market just kind of hung flat. So clearly, this transaction's been built into their stock price for a while. It's kind of what we speculated. We didn't expect some massive pop after this deal was announced. Everyone just kind of expected. at and just shot some free throws, took some easy layups, and did what everyone was expecting them to do. You know, they tune up the band and they lay the sweet chin music down on Bret Hart because Bret screwed Bret. Now, <laughs> now, for dividend investors, the stock is now trading at just a hair below $28. The yield is swelling up to 75 to 8%. You know, the big question mark is, is what's management going to do about their dividend? They're still in an aristocrat status because the 2020 paid out dividend was greater than the 2019 paid out dividend, but 2021 is where it's gonna really matter. And they only have a few months left to go in this year already um, to really be able to keep that aristocrat status going. And that's what's interesting here. Management has kind of said they wanna maintain the current dividend level. 
understood now that they figured out direct tv they made to make some other strategic moves there the picture is starting to to become clear for where AT&T is going to be and how their financials are going to shake out once they clear out some of the old noise. So let's target the third quarter to see what's going to happen with the dividend. So if, they, if they're going to announce something and pay a larger dividend in 2021, they only have a few dividends left to pay. So target Q3 to announce a dividend increase potentially for Q4 so you can get that November dividend to pay it higher than 2020. Yeah, so that's the big piece that I'm letting you investors, the viewers and the watchers, you know, pay attention to again is that quarter three timeline for when they announce. Um, and to be honest with you, if I take a quick look, um, they usually announce that November dividend, um, as I pull it up here, yeah. they usually announce it um, you know, in September. So really focus in on that end of Q3 announcement. AT&T, you know, that last week of September will tell you what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So we've got about seven months remaining. Yep, there's still plenty of time for things. That's a lot of time in the market. Trust us, we all know that, and we've learned that more in 2020 than anything, that seven months, a lot can happen. So we'll see what happens, so please. So we were curious here too, as uh, for all you AT&T investors, are you buying now below 28? Do you like the yield where it's at? Do you like what management did? Or are you gonna wait to see if something happens further with at and stock price to see if at and is a stock to buy right now? Or are you simply saying, hey, I'm done with at and They got a bad deal on this DirecTV deal, I'm out. We wanna know if you're shark tanking it over there. Yeah, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up so we can keep delivering dividend news to you and directly to your YouTube feed. Yeah, we'll keep you updated with AT&T, again, like we do with all our other dividend stocks, with the increases, the purchases, the analyses. Um, obviously, you know, we have large positions with AT&T stocks, so we're giving you the news as we interpret them. Um, you know, we wish you obviously the best. We're here to answer all of your questions to help you on your journey to financial freedom. This is Burton Laney from the Dividend Diplomats. Over, Over and out. out.